Pie Descent is oh, back with us. Go. The ghosts of Easter Wasn't there Puff. for the first two weeks and all of a sudden it's, crop, it's popped up no, again. so this is in your game. Did, I'm so curious, the on-ground reaction in real time, What what was? did you know instantly what was going on? No, I had, I had no idea. I had to ask the umpire what it was and he said Descent and I just assumed that... Did you ask him nicely, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very nicely, actually. <laughs> well, I didn't give it away the other way, so... No, I just... I, I had no idea. I'm actually not far away from... Um, you can actually yes. see me just there. I'm actually having some dissent yeah. at my teammate and I hear me with the ball, but um, no, I had, I had no idea what happened. He said descent. I assumed that it was, he swore at him or something. That's my initial reaction. And having seen it after, that does happen a lot in games. Um, I had a, a press yesterday and my response to it all is it's going to be hard with human error in our game. I think there's, there's always going to be a sense of grey in our game and we do have to accept that that's part of it. And, Umpires are humans, they're going to make mistakes just like we as players make mistakes. So um, it would be nice to know whether that's going to be an ongoing thing moving forward. If that's sort of, we're back to the start of last year when that was that was 100% a free kick and um, it was a really costly moment in, in that game of footy. So um, if I was probably on the other side, I'd be a bit more flat about it, but we got the yeah. win off the I back. I feel it. like we have the right balance here because we have one of the more calm and calculated <laughs> players in the game and one of the more emotive that oh. have, have played the game. Do you... Because you're a smart man. Do you have an idea of what the threshold is at the moment? Like, do you sort of go, look, I know I can no, ask no one or has I know an idea. I, what I can't. No one has an idea because yeah. the umpires have admitted that each umpire's got a different yeah. emotional reaction to, to players. So how, how are we to know whether we catch someone on a bad day or a good day? Yeah. And, I mean, there's, there's moments after that, um, that descent free kick where players are doing the exact same thing and we don't get the, we don't get the same result. So... I mean, we're, I, I'm, I'm scratching my head. Are there some more sort of senior umpires that you know, that, you've, that have umpired for a long time, that you know you can probably ask those questions and they'll give you an I answer? I would have said and... way worse things. <laughs> I've done, I've done yeah. more demonstrative stuff to senior umpires and had, had just had a normal conversation or just asked the question, which you do sometimes. Yeah. Like, now with four umpires, there's one genuinely around the, the centre of the ground, the key forwards. You'd be like, why is that a free kick? Mm. And that's a bit of a natural reaction. And, but that could be deemed as dissent. Um, and which is the Coniglio example there. So, I mean, I'm still scratching my head about it and I think most of the footy public probably are as so well. So I think that's the outlier. So that's below the threshold. Yeah. I, I reckon if you read between So would you the say lines, that was wrong then? Yeah, that's yeah. an unwarranted free kick. Yeah. But the AFL doesn't want to say that because it becomes a free-for-all for you. Yeah. Any, you can go back to any level of descent that you like. Yeah, well, it's funny that we haven't seen anything in the first two weeks and then all of a sudden this sort of cropped its head up and it was like, oh, that's still a rule. Because even at the back end of last year, it, it's, it's sort of we found sort of water found its natural level a little bit, and yeah, there's the full abuse ones where there's swearing and verbal and really demonstrative, but that was a very very costly for a kick at a, at a pivotal time in a game. So I think it I think it definitely has a place in the game. Like the rule is there for the right reasons, and I think we have to have it as part. But again, what level constitute the free kicks is going to be such a hard part because, as Jack said, there's. Every umpire is different. Every umpire can take it differently and every umpire is going to choose their decision differently. But if you go back to the crux of the rule of to protect the umpires um, and more broadly at local level, I think that the free kick and the rule is the right thing. But how we get to what's right and what constitutes a free kick is going to be just incredibly hard What's dissent and what's appealing for a free kick yeah. as well? <laughs> that's yeah. really no, interesting. I, no, I think that's really clear. Where there is no decision, you're appealing for a free kick. Yeah. So, so is a, Coniglio a, appealing for a free kick there? Because there was no decision on McKay. No, there was a decision. What was it? It just wasn't the decision he yeah, wanted. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You couldn't stop complaining, could you? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, that, no. That actually, hey, Jared. Oh, far be it from me to say, but that would stop it. Jared, if you stopped Jared. complaining. Me stop complaining? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> All right. Um, you're part of Good Friday, as Sam, and you've lived life's big journeys over recent years. Is How do you find going back to a hospital environment and seeing young kids like you would have done earlier this week and their struggles? Yeah, it's tough. Um, I, I find going to the Royal Children's one of the, the tougher ones to do, um, more from your own personal bias. And uh, I was just saying to Jack backstage, now having a child myself, um, puts an extra layer on it. We went yesterday and there was, a, um, there was a little girl that was in there. She'd been in there for 10 months. Found out on day 10 of her life that she had leukaemia. So they, their whole lived experience of their child has been in hospital. You look at it both ways and you just understand how much great work that the Royal Children's actually does. And it gives you a great perspective about what we're actually doing 
and what Friday actually means um, to a, a, a really wide range of people and especially the people that are in there. I think shining a light on the great work the hospital does but um, bringing a sense of joy um, to the families. Like that's as, as hard as it is to go in, it's one of my favourite things to do because you go in there and sometimes it's not about the kid, it's actually about the family. Yep. It's about the mum and the dad that are sitting in the seat beside them that are watching their child have to go through something pretty tough and essentially you're bringing a smile onto their child's face but a, li a living memory that they get to take with um, back home and, and wherever that um, brings great joy to their whole family. How many days would you have spent in hospital in your couple of stints? Uh, well, the main, the main one was, was chemo last year and that was uh, about probably 30, 30 days total, Yep. which in the grand scheme of things is probably nowhere near what some of the guys are doing um, in the Royal Children's at the moment. Um, they're tough places to be. I, I don't think any, anyone that's been in hospital, the, as much as you try and talk yourself into the food being any good, the food's rough, then you're staring at the four walls, you don't, you don't want to leave. I think in COVID, we've just come out of COVID years, I, I, I was terrified coming out of hospital going back into the world knowing that my immune system was low and the risk that that had on me if I was in contact with COVID and um, all of those families have had that that fear for the last three or four years where they've obviously got their child that's going through a really tough time but then if they, they get some chances to go outside they've also got COVID that if an immune, immunocompromised child gets COVID that could have been the end so um, yeah, I don't know. If, I, if I bring it back to just footy and Good Friday and, and what we get to do this week, um, it's a great privilege that um, us as Carlton and, and the Kangas get to play on Friday and, and represent that whole organisation and all the great work that they do. Yeah, well said. Tigers, big game this week. Just yep. a bit off at the moment, particularly offensively, just not clicking on all cylinders, but yeah. big game against the Dogs. Yeah, it's been interesting. Really strong defensively, both sides in round one with the draw. Then offensively, we we're, were better and then... Defensively, we were actually pretty good on the weekend, um, keeping the, oh, I think they're probably the Premiership favourites and the highest scoring team to 60 odd points. So uh, there, has, there has been a, a bit of a focus on offence, but it's funny how they marry in offence and defence so much. It's, you've got to sort of give up a little bit to, to get a bit more if you want to, if you want to play a bit more freer. Um, defensively, you, you, you probably give up a little bit. So it's finding that balance and um, had a conversation with a few of the guys during the week. It's that, that's what the season and, and the start of the season is for. It's finding that balance. You want to come out and obviously play great footy round one and be winning and whatnot. But you still need to find out where your system stacks up. And we think we've got some really good areas. Uh, and probably only got to look to the last sort of 20 games. The weekend was the, the most we've lost by in the last 20 games in our losses. So we're doing some really good stuff defensively. We would like to score more um, because that premiership profile is sort of around that 90 to 100 points in a game. Uh, so there's a few things. We get a couple of bikes back this week too, which is pretty important. Who are those blokes? They are good ones. D. Martin, he goes all right. Uh, and Jacob Hopper, who, if you asked me a week and a half ago, uh, when I was standing on the half-forward flank, he went down, he grabbed his knee, and I just went, oh, dear. Uh, but then to have, have one week with just um, a, a minor leg issue... Um, yeah, it's good to good to have him back.